We'll talk for a second about variables. Again, I'm going to build something uh, from start to finish here just so you can kind of see it. Something real simple. But I want you to see the workflow of then adding the variables, the constraints, and then setting what we call a variant. And then also, I'll end it with uh, placing a parametric cell. I do see a question in there, too, about uh, can you change the, uh, the variables programmatically? I guess you can in the variable section. There is an expression builder. I really didn't get into it, but into that too much. But most definitely, you can use that to drive the uh, variables. And uh, also, will the session be available on demand? Yes, it will. It already is actually. There's a course with the same name out there. Uh, Stop creating um, inefficient models. Uh, that is our, that is available. So let me jump over to MicroStation, and let's take this as an example here. Let me jump into steel beams. All right. So let's say what I need to do, uh, you know, is uh, I basically need to place like a wide flange, an I-beam, right? So let me jump into the right model. All right. So I've already got this one done. I'm going to go, I'll, I'll create something that is a, a single angle in just a second, but we'll start with this. Um, so when the variables change that we have here, it drives the geometry. I think you guys already know that. You see that there's a whole bunch of different, uh, actually this is somewhat over-constrained, but it brings us down to where we have uh, no degrees of freedom. So we fully constrained this profile. And in an example, you know, if all I was drawing was one I-beam that's here, I probably wouldn't go through the, the, the time to apply all of the variables and create these different variations. Again, what I mentioned earlier is where this really shines is when you say, okay, for those W beams, for that I beam, I need this many different variations. I need a six by eight and a half. I need two types of those, a 12 and a 24 foot, a six by nine, a six by 12, a six by 15, a six by 20. You get the idea. Is that these are all the different variations. And if anyone is familiar with, um, you know, the steel tables, if we were to take a look at those, uh, what's the AISC steel tables that are out there, there's way more than just what I have listed here. I just kind of parted them down to a few uh, to use. So I want to apply that to the geometry. These are variations. If I was to select a 6 by 20 as an example, I can apply that variant to the geometry. And now you'll see the geometry update. Not, not a huge change, right? Uh, but you can see it change. This all of these are different variants. We are variations. The variations are collections, if you will, of all the local variable definitions. These are stored inside the file. And the end result of this, which I'll show you in a second, is that these variations can be placed into, the, into another file as cells. And it gives us the ability to place the geometry as a cell and after the fact, go back and change the variations if I need to. And I'll, that'll make sense in, in just a second. But let's wander through just building one of these, okay? So if I take a look at something like the single angle, right? I come in here, I'm going to use these variables that I have defined. I already have these predefined, okay? So what I need to do is I'm just going to kind of slide this off to the side. Again, just like I did earlier, we'll pick something like place smart line. And I'm just going to start start drawing. I'm going to use this point here because this is going to be my origin, as you guys know, with MicroStation, with Connect and, and, and V8i, is that this is my origin, if you will, for my, uh, for my auxiliary coordinate system, but it's also 0, 0 that I'll use for placing uh, things like cells. So if I create this, uh, and I'll show you that in a moment, but we'll move our cursor out. And of course, the distance really doesn't matter, but I'm going to get this somewhat close. So this is about I don't know, four, four and a half, a little over four and a half inches. That's fine. I don't necessarily even care too much about the angles of this. I just am going to kind of sketch this out. I don't care really about uh, the height, but I want to get it somewhat L-shaped, uh, if you will, just sort of uh, close enough to L-shaped. Let me, let me bump the weight up on this too. So again, so you all can, can see that. Let's go up to that. There we go. That makes it a little easier to see. So here they are. Now, you know, again, this is just 
naked geometry, I want to start applying some constraints to this. So exactly like I started with last time, what's the anchor point, if you will? So I'm going to change the fixed. Uh, I'm going to set the fixed uh, location for right here. That's going to be the point that everything is scaled up from. Then I'm going to say, let's uh, define the, the, the angle of that. And then I might do something like, these are parallel to one another. This is parallel to this. Uh, the, these three vertical lines are parallel to one another. And you start to see the geometry change, right? As I'm applying constraints, geometric constraints, you see the geometry update. And now, if I take a look at the degrees of freedom and I was to select that, you'll see that there's five degrees of, of freedom that are out there. I could do things like, well, let's actually, I probably didn't even need to do parallel because I probably could have just done, let's just run through perpendicular on these. And we'll make sure that these, that way it doesn't, we don't end up with some odd shape to it. There we go. And now let's go through and apply some of these variables. So if we take a look at the by element, for example, I want to pick the bottom edge and bring that down. Well, that is a variable that is called BF. We're going to select that. So we'll select that. And you'll see it changes because why? It matches the six inches that we have defined in the variables over here. And if I just kind of work my way around and say, all right, the thickness of the flange is TF. So we'll select it. And then we said, okay, the um, let's pick the width here, uh, TW. And lastly, D the height. So we'll select it. Again, what is it using to define all this? It is using the variables that get defined over here. These can be changed at any time. I can just type in over the top of them. But what I want to do is create different variations of these. All right, so let's create a, a variation. Down here, I'll select that. Let's create our variant in here. And we'll say, um, let's create all this one. Actually, let me make sure I have it selected. There we go. This is going to be L6 by 6 by 9, so the name of it, 9 sixteenths. And then I'm going to create this one. We'll just call this like 12, a 12 foot section. All right. So this is six by six by six, uh, five, six, two, five. That is exactly what it is. We need this to be 12 feet. Okay. So there's our first variation. Let's copy that. I'm going to just duplicate that and let's change this to 24 feet. Okay. Oops, not 124. How about 24 feet? Not that the naming matters too much here, but we'll put 24 feet. So there's our second variation. And we're going to create a brand new variation in here. And this one is going to be our L6 by 4 by 3 eighths. Okay, and let's make this one 24 feet as well. So there's, there's that one, and now we need to adjust the values for it. So this is because it's six by six. So we might come in here and say, okay, that is good. This needs to be four. We need to change this to 0.375. Make sure that I'm typing in what I need to be here. Just going to copy that because I'm lazy. We'll put that in there. So there are three different variations. Again, how are these applied? Well, what I can do is select them and hit apply the variant. Now, you won't see too much difference between these two because the length is changing. I'll show you how we get that in a second. But there's a little bit of difference when I select the 6 by 4 and 3 eighths. You all see that changing? All right. Now, let's give it a height. Let's show you how we take that length that's in there, the L value, and apply it to this geometry. This is just a 2D profile because I'll go to my isometric view here. Let me shut off those glyphs. We really don't need to see those right now, those little markers that we see. Let's just kill those off. This is L6 by 4 by and 3 eighths, and it's 24 foot long. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our modeling ribbon tab that's here, and we'll select under solids, extrude, 
And we're going to make sure that our distance is not just set to some hard-coded value of uh, 12. Um, so I'll pick this right here, which has a little drop-down that appears. And this is, of course, everything we see in the variables. I'm going to set that to the value of L. Now, it's not going to hard-code it to 24 because that's something that can change. I'll set it to that, and I will extrude this. So there's my 3D geometry using that profile. How do you change this geometry between the different variations? I can select it and apply that variant. When I do, you look and you say, wait a minute, what happened? You know, what happened to the, uh, the geometry? If I zoom out, it's 12 foot long. It's using the variation that's 12 foot. There it is, 24. Here we'll see the geometry change a little bit as far as size goes. But it's using that name set of variables that we see there. Now, how do you use those? I mean, great, that's wonderful in this file, but how would I then place these, these beams, if you will, as, um, you know, as cells? If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.